In the charming and secluded bay of Guajnik, hidden away amongst the greenery and a couple of highly exclusive resorts, floating in crystal clear waters and blending seamlessly with the peaceful surroundings of southern Turkey, lies a yacht so refined and uniquely crafted that to step on board is to step into another world. Her name is Dilnisin. I've often said that one of the reasons that people buy yachts is that any conceivable pleasure is accentuated on a yacht. Whether it's eating, sleeping, recreation, everything just feels so much better on a yacht. Now, while I've been here actually in Turkey, I've visited a few clients in some really nice hotels and resorts. And I looked at the swimming pools and the bars and the spas and I said, that would be so nice just to spend a week there. But nothing, nothing compares with the sense of total relaxation that swept over me the moment I stepped on board Dilnisin. Dilnisim was crafted by the Taka Yachts shipyard, world renowned for their construction of wooden and epoxy modern gentlemen's cruisers. Whilst filming this video, the owner of the yacht called me and his love of the vessel came through in his voice. He told me that the aft deck table had once hosted 15 guests and that the yacht was originally built for a 90 year old gentleman. So accessibility on and off the yacht, as well as a particularly wide side deck configuration, were of particular importance. At the bow, a comfortable seating area is located and the stainless steel stanchions that you see here are for a dedicated sun awning, allowing you to enjoy this secluded spot at any time of the day. The sun deck too offers a wonderfully secluded area. Some may put a helm station here, but the owner was telling me that he prefers to keep this deck space as a private area, maximizing the space available. There is a spacious dining area under the shade, plenty of spots to sunbathe, and this central unit houses two Gaganau grills, as well as a large fridge and an ice maker. Moving further aft, we have two more stainless steel stanchions for another sun awning and a crane to launch the tender. Inside the yacht is everything you could hope for for a yacht of this style. The wood is mahogany, which is absolutely in keeping with the old gentlemen's yachts from the 1920s and the 1930s. We have this beautiful skylight letting light flood into the area that also has blinds if you want a little bit of shade as well. There's so many features I'm looking forward to showing you and actually if you particularly enjoy the parts of the videos in which I show the engine room you're in for a treat because at the end of this part of the presentation I'll go into a little bit more detail than I normally do about the engine room on this yacht. A few details I like for example this ornament here and a word of warning, when you buy a yacht, not everything that you see on board is always for sale. There's always owner's personal possessions too, and you should make sure you know what is and what isn't included. Many a sale has fallen apart of a yacht due to some misunderstanding along those lines. But this is apparently a ship's chronometer, um, an original piece. It's got the name of the, the ship from Amsterdam and it's just a great example of how you can personalize a yacht when you buy it with little ornaments like that that are really in keeping with the general ambience of the yacht. It also reminds me of the fact that we have a partnership with Ulysse Nardin who originally were some of the original manufacturers of those old ship's chronometers. Moving on. This is the owner's stateroom. 
I mentioned that originally the yacht was built for a gentleman who is 90 years old. So for him, it was really important to have accessibility on and off the yacht, but also he really did want to have a master stateroom on the main deck because at that age, it must be quite difficult to get up and down stairs to the other cabins. It's a really nicely proportioned cabin, actually. Good view and a beautiful day like this here in this bay close to Bodrum. It's absolutely magnificent. Good sized bathroom as well. And I wanted to show you this because the size of the shower is particularly impressive. And actually every shower on the yacht has good head height. So you don't have to crouch down and try to wash your hair uh, like that. A little bit further on. And we have the galley. Good sized fridge freezer there good oven space, nice hot plate here as well. But I particularly wanted to show you this, the two taps. That tap actually has potable water in it. Now, an issue with lots of yachts of all different sizes is that the crew have to provision the yacht before a long cruise and that entails bringing in sometimes hundreds of plastic bottles of water. And apart from the fact that nobody really likes to waste plastic these days, also it's kind of difficult to know where to put all of those bottles on a yacht. The way that they've done it on this yacht, I'll show you. This cap here actually opens up and the crew will come on with one very, very large bottle of water and that holds a potable water tank. So they've got enough water to drink to be able to keep going actually for well over a week, even with lots of people on board. It's a great idea. It saves space on board. And also it does to some degree save on plastic too. While we're here, let me show you that we have more storage space here. Further storage space in here and all of these drawers. This acts as a day head, but also as a head to this forward stateroom here where we have two reasonably sized beds. It's a fairly small cabin, but it's really functional and it's great if you have those extra guests on board and you do need that extra space. The main guests though, I'll show you where they sleep in a moment, but first let's take a look at the bridge. Now this is not just the main helm, it's actually the only helm. Some yachts will have another helm station on the sun deck. The owner of this yacht preferred not to do that, as we mentioned earlier. Uh, it's simple, it's functional, there's great visibility all the way around. But I should also mention that there's a second kind of a helm station on the aft deck. It's really a mooring station. It's a great place to be if you're mooring the yacht because you can easily see the distance to the dock if you're backing in from there. But also from here, the captain has easy access to the side decks either side to take a look at his distances from the dock. It's so important when you are docking. I think most of the navigation um, of a yacht is reasonably straightforward. The tricky part is getting in and out of a marina. So maneuverability is so important. Let's take a look now at where your guests will stay on board. To starboard, we have these twin beds here in a really nicely proportioned cabin once again, still in that beautiful mahogany style. Again, I'd remind you that the bathroom here too has good head height for the showers. And to the port side, you can see the flexibility of the yacht because they're two single beds with a filler so that you can use this as one very large double bed. And again, with a really nice, functional, spacious bathroom. The fun starts here though. Follow me. Now this is the crew quarters for the yacht. The first thing that you'll probably notice is a very large freezer here. The reason for that is that uh, the owner was telling me that the original owner, who sadly was only able to use the yacht for a very, very short amount of time, did want originally to cruise extensively. So he uh, filled the yacht with fridges, freezers, all over the place so that he'd have plenty of supplies on board. And actually the owner was telling me that he himself was able to use the yacht extensively during the uh, COVID period when he isolated almost for six months with his family. They were able to isolate with the crew in safety. Um, and he found then that features such as this freezer became very handy uh, to be able to always have food on board. There's two bunks here. 
uh, one slightly larger than the other, a washer, a dryer. But have a look at this. The engine room. This has to be one of the largest engine rooms I have ever seen, probably the largest engine room I have ever seen on a 24 meter yacht. It's really quite extraordinary. These are two 610 horsepower Scania engines. They used to propel the yacht to 17 knots top speed. I say used to because then not that long ago, the shipyard added what the owner calls a flap to the underside of the hull at the stern. I'm not sure whether that's a hull vane, a kind of a foil, it's what it sounds like it probably is. But the effect it has is that when the yacht's underway, it slightly lifts the stern to reduce the drag of the water. They thought that that would improve performance. They didn't believe though, that it would actually improve the top speed from 17 to 19 and a half knots. That's got to be good for fuel economy, for range, obviously for speed, a really great addition to the yacht. There are so many features here I want to show you, I almost don't know where to start. When you're looking at a yacht and you want to buy it, it's always a good idea to lift the platforms. You never know what you're going to find. Maybe oil, maybe bilge water. Look at this, totally clean, beautiful bilge. No bilge water, no oil, just the way that it really should be. And then look at how well labelled everything is in the engine room. This is fantastic for maintenance. There are 24 meter yachts built by far more famous builders where you just can't even get to the engines or to the filters. Everything's accessible here. You can see these green lines here, engine room bilge suction, here laundry bilge suction. They all lead to this manifold here. And the idea of the manifold is that basically when water accumulates in a bilge, which it does in any yacht, you have a bilge pump and a float switch. As the float switch lifts with the rising water, it then activates the pump and the pump pumps the water out. What happens though, if it's not working, if the float switch is not working? Well, very simply, you turn a valve on this manifold, you take this handle out, and you start pumping. That also works in an opposite direction and you can use this as an emergency fire hose too. So really everything's been thought of. It doesn't end there though, because look behind me is a whole new area with tanks, with the generators, the door closes of course, to keep the generator noise down. On the subject of tanks, there's two fuel tanks, one either side of the engines, which is really good for the stability of the yacht. You do see some yachts listing sometimes to one side or to the other. It's a good idea to have the fuel tanks on either side just to keep that level stability. That 24 meter segment of yachts is really quite a crowded market space. It seems that there's something for everybody. But honestly, I would say about 90% of them are all pretty much the same. We're looking at fiberglass planing holes. Here you have something different sitting in that remaining 10%. Here you have a yacht that is extraordinary, amazing deck space, great performance, a charming interior. In short, she's a little gem. The man who made this video possible is the same man that represents the owner of the yacht. And that's the man that you need to contact if you want more details. He's my friend and he's my colleague, Dennis Kamaz, and it's his email address that's on screen now.